Welcome back to the Spread Pick'em Show with Mike and Andrew. Week number eight here. Uh, Andrew, how you doing, buddy? Doing all right. I'm doing all right. How about yeah. yourself? Doing all right. Uh, yeah, I'm fine. You know, just trying to multitask here. Got the nets on in the background, but we'll get through the video here. You know, we got some games to go over. So let's go over last week real quick. Um, we are actually tied. Our records for the season are tied, and uh, yes. I did not think it was going to get to this point because I had eight games on you just a few weeks ago. I'm kind of like the uh, the Sam Darnold of spread picks. I start out hot, and then you know I've been horrible the last four weeks. So me and you are right, right now 51, 54, and two. So let's go over last week real quick. You won by one point on Thursday. I, I had the Broncos, and you had the Browns. You got the win. Um, actually, you started off with your first like seven games in a row, by the way. So you had the Giants. You had the Dolphins, you had the Packers, you had the Bengals, you had the Patriots, and you had the Titans. And you texted me after those games. You're like, yo, I'm perfect. And then you went on to lose, I think, every game in the 4 o'clock. Is that right? Yes, I went 0-4, so yes. You very much but I swept yourself. the primetime games. Or no, I didn't. I no, didn't. You lost I, the Saints. I, I, yes, I did. We lost by two points there. So, yeah. um, all right, so for me, I had a nice run in the middle here with the Packers, Bengals, Patriots. I took the Titans and the Lions. That's the one you got wrong there with the Rams. Then I took the Eagles. I took the Texans, who we felt good about. I took the Bears idiotically. I took the Niners idiotically. And then we took the Saints, who won, but did not cover that spread there. So once again, we're tied. So we're kind of back to week one here, but um, we know more stuff now, hopefully. So um, let's get into week number eight here. Um, we start with a Thursday night game. That's actually a good one on paper, but some injuries to this game or COVID, I should say, is taking away from this. So of course, Devontae Adams is out for the Packers and Alan Lazard is out for the Packers. I saw that JJ Watt is out for the Cardinals in this game as well. Anyway, the Green Bay Packers are at the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona, the last undefeated team in the NFL, and Arizona is a minus six at home. We differ here. I'm taking the Cardinals, and you're going to go with the Packers. Yeah, until about 15 minutes ago, I was actually agreeing with you. I, I actually did text him Arizona, but I said, give me Green Bay on that top game. Because, right, you know, I wanted to switch it up. And I actually saw a stat that said uh, Aaron Rodgers is actually better statistically in games without Devontae Adams. Now, I'm not one to really, like, be like, wow, like, oh, wow, that's immediately going to change my opinion. But I don't think these two teams are very far apart. I mean, other than that first game Green Bay played where Aaron Rodgers looked horrible, everybody started to question if his mind was in it. They're 6-0, and right? So they're winning a lot of games. They're, pl they're playing a lot of teams very well. And I think this could be a close game uh, against Arizona. I feel like Arizona is kind of a team that – doesn't really know how to handle success. We haven't seen it a lot from them in the past. Uh, on the other hand, Aaron Rodgers is always successful, always a playoff team usually. So maybe that comes to play here. I still think Arizona wins. I think they go 8-0. But I think Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers play close. And again, that stat with Aaron Rodgers playing better without Devontae Adams helped me in this decision making. Uh, I am starting Randall Cobb in fantasy against you this week, Mike. So uh, Are you? I thought yeah. I dropped him. I'm, I, I, pick, I, I picked him up. He didn't hit waivers again? What do you mean? That was my whole strategy was to pick up Cobb and then drop him so that he would be on waivers so you can't pick him up. So I guess he just didn't go back on waivers? No, nah, he's, he's in my lineup. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yahoo really screwed me over there. I was like big brain. I'm like, yeah. I'm going to pick up Randall Cobb so Andrew can't pick him up, and now you have him. So uh, thanks a lot, Yahoo Sports. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, I guess you're done there with your, uh, your game pick there. All right, I so – it's, it's tough to, like, bet against Aaron Rodgers with six points. And I actually wanted to ask you about the Devontae Adams stat. Is that before Devontae Adams was a Packer or while he's been on the Packers? Cause that it's was... since 2019. Wow. Well, how many games has he missed since then? I feel like it hasn't uh, I'm not sure the actual, like, amount of games. I know he's over 300 yards passing per game, about three touchdowns per game, mm -hmm. like, uh, around that area. I don't know, the stat seems whack to me. I don't, I don't buy into it. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, I think a lot of people are going to bet the Packers this week, and the, the sports books always win. So um, I like Arizona, of course, offensively. Um, you know, Green Bay's defense, while they're pretty good, is not as good as Arizona's right now. And you take away Aaron Rodgers' best weapon. Like, Devontae Adams has, I think, the highest target share in an offense right now. Like, Devontae Adams – this offense runs through him. Of course, Aaron Rodgers is one of the better quarterbacks in football, but I'm not going to completely think that 
Aaron Rodgers can carry his team to a victory with, you know, guys like Randall Cobb once again and Robert Tanyan and all these guys because Arizona's defense once again has played well this year. And I don't see Arizona's offense being stopped in this game. So I feel like when you take Devontae Adams off the Packers and Alan Lazard, you're able to zone in on the running backs. You're able to zone in on Randall Cobb and kind of take those guys out the game and make somebody else beat you. So I do feel good about Arizona as long as they score. And I don't see a reason why they shouldn't in, in this one. So there's a chance the Packers cover, of course. I'd like Arizona to outright win this game. But um, with Arizona being at home here and, you know, they're the team that's undefeated. I Like the Packers, they have been covering lately, but like they're barely covering. They, they, the Packers haven't looked overly impressive lately, but like I feel like Arizona has. So I'm going to go with the uh, Cardinals there. I lose every Thursday night game. So if you're going to bet, you might as well just go with Andrew because I don't win Thursday nights. So um, usually I, I lose in heartbreaking fashion. I probably lose this one because uh, the Packers get like uh, – I don't know. They lose by five or something is probably how it's going to work. Anyway, on to Sunday's games. The um, We have an AFC East matchup. The Miami Dolphins are at the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo is a minus 13 and a half, and we're both going to go with Buffalo. Yeah, I think last week I, I, I did pick Miami, and I think they covered by maybe half a point against Atlanta. They were getting two and a half at home. But they're, they're in the news again, right, because you saw that Deshaun Watson will go to the Dolphins as long as he passes everything legally. So that can't be a good feeling for Tua, who has played very well in his last two games. Uh, other than the well. turnovers, other than the turnovers, he's had 95-plus QB rating in both of those games, has been able to perform. Now, he did play Atlanta last week, which was the better of those last two games, and they have a bad defense. And now – you have to go up in the cold Buffalo against a really, really strong defense. I, I think it's hard to do, especially with what I just mentioned. Tua might not be the starting uh, starting quarterback in, in two weeks if everything goes well for Deshaun Watson. So that's got to be in his head. I think uh, Brian Flores, I read an article that a lot of teammates or a lot of his uh, players are questioning his coaching ability. Uh, a lot of players are questioning the coaching staff as a whole. I just don't think they're in a great spot right now. Uh, if you're an Eagles fan, they're in a fantastic spot because we currently have their pick. But uh, I, I think Buffalo is just the better team overall, and I think they can win this game by two touchdowns. I agree with you, actually. I mean, I think back to those matchups they had last year um, when Miami and Buffalo played last year. They played twice, of course, being in division, and Buffalo just spanked them both times. And last year, even in week 17, I think Josh Allen played a half that game, and they won that game like 56 to 20. Like, they just annihilated Miami last year. And Miami, I guess, got a little better on paper this year, but they're not that much different. Like, Miami is legitimately – a bad Damian Harris fumble away in week one from being like winless right now. Like that's kind of how bad yeah. they've been. And they competed. They, they were in that game last week. Of course, the Falcons let everybody back in the games is what they do, but Miami's just not a good team in my opinion. And I look at Buffalo. Um, yes. They lost to the Titans. I think last time we saw them, but like they're going to have a bounce back here. They historically play very well against Miami here. And I want to ask you this actually, because you know, do you think – I want to ask you this question. Do you think Deshaun Watson plays a snap in 2021? Because I personally don't think so. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's tricky because I don't really know where he's at legally. Like right now, like I, have, I feel like we haven't heard any updates whatsoever on his case, so it's hard to say. I know Roger Goodell came out and said that he could play now, like despite all the legal stuff. Like if Miami wanted him to play next game, like he's allowed to do that. I, I just – I can't say he will because I really don't know what's going on, so I'm going to go with uh, no. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of with you on that one. I mean, we don't know, of course, but yeah, I guess technically he could play. Like if the Texans activated him this week, he could play, right? Like I don't yeah, right. think it's against the rules or anything. So interesting situation. I, I just don't think a team is trading for him unless the, the legal stuff is settled. And I don't see it being settled by the time the trade deadline comes around in a week. So we'll see. Anyway, on to the Carolina Panthers, the PJ Walker led Panthers. No, I'm kidding. It's going to be Sam Darnold, but we'll see at the end here as Blake Griffin and Bam Adebayo are getting into it here. Pretty uh, nice matchup. All right, so the Carolina Panthers are at the Atlanta Falcons coming off their victory last week. Atlanta is a minus two and a half at home here, and we're both going to be idiots here and take the Panthers. Yeah, I think the Panthers are going to outright win this game. I think it's a good spot for them. I think it's a good chance for them to get back in it. I know Christian McCaffrey is not going to be on the field again, and that's Kind of what we've seen so far is they really don't do well offensively unless Christian McCaffrey's on the field. I think with the third week, third or fourth week without Christian McCaffrey, they might be able to finally figure something else out, uh, another target to go to. Maybe Sam Darnold becomes more accurate a little bit. I, I don't really know. But I think 
against a really, really bad Atlanta Falcons defense, it's a chance for Sam Donald to get back on track. And every all the Jets fans were like, why did we give this guy away? He looked so good in Carolina. And now he's kind of come back down to earth a little bit. And he's lost his last few games. So I think it's a good bounce back week for them. I think Atlanta is a very, very poor opponent. And I think it's an opponent that they could possibly beat up on if, uh, if things go their way. So I'm going to take Carolina actually getting points here in Atlanta. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, you look at the teams that Atlanta has beat this year. They beat the Giants, I believe. They beat Miami, and they beat the Jets, right? Those are the only three wins they've had. Like, they haven't beat yeah. a good team yet. And I'm not saying Carolina is a good team because they haven't been, but, like, I think this is a good bounce back spot for them. Like, I feel like the public's going to look at this game and be like, oh, Sam Darnold's so bad. He got benched for PJ Walker, and he has been bad, but I don't think Sam Darnold is this level of bad. I think against a beatable uh, Atlanta Falcons defense, I think that he'll find a way to bounce back here. I know he's missing Christian McCaffrey, who's still going to be on IR this week, but. I think they can move the ball here. I actually have some confidence that Carolina can win this game. I'm with you. Um, it is in division, of course. I feel like anything happens in those matchups. But Carolina, um, they need a bounce back. I, I still have faith in Matt Rule. I think he's a fine coach. And Atlanta's still in year one of their coach. And I, I know Kyle Pitts is breaking out, and he's like tough to guard right now. But at least the Panthers have some guys like Jeremy Chin, I feel like, can match up with him or something. So, you know, hopefully they can mitigate him. And we really haven't seen Calvin Ridley pop off this year. So, um, you know, I feel like they can mitigate that offense, especially with how well the Panthers defense has played up until last week, which was the Giants, ironically. But um, I think they'll be fine here, Carolina. I think they finally get back on the right track. And I think they win this game by a little bit, maybe three or four points or so. So I'll take Carolina with you. Um, Next, we're on to another in-division matchup. Is everything in division this week? There's another one. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot of in-division matchups. All right. So we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're at the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland's a minus three and a half at home. We're not sure if it's Baker Mayfield or um, what the hell's his name? Case Keenum as the starter for the Browns right now. We saw him on Thursday. I would guess Baker Mayfield plays, but it's also not a guarantee. But I, I would think in this in-division matchup now, the Steelers are back to, um, back to three and three, I believe. I think the Browns need this game or not need it, but they want this game more than your average game. So I would think Baker Mayfield plays, but we'll see. So anyway, Cleveland's a minus three and a half. I'm taking the Steelers and you're going with Cleveland. Yeah. Again, I feel like this is another good spot where maybe this spread is affected by the injuries that the Browns are facing. And um, I, I just, I, I simply don't think the Steelers can keep up with the Browns. And I think we've been uh, a little, uneasy on the Browns because they haven't played well lately. And I know they're a better team than that. Their defense has still played uh, phenomenal. I think they are a phenomenal defense. And we forget that a couple or three weeks ago, they played the Chargers and put up 42 points. I mean, this offense can score. And I understand Baker Mayfield, if he does play, is not going to be entirely healthy. But we saw that running game against Denver last week, even without their top two running backs they were still able to pound it on the ground. And I think that's exactly what they go against Pittsburgh. Look, Pittsburgh hasn't really beat a good team all year. I know they had that week one win over the Buffalo Bills. Everybody was surprised about that. But after that, they played the Seahawks. They beat the Seahawks, who were without Russell Wilson. They lost to the Bengals. They beat the Broncos. They beat um, – and that's it. That's all That's yeah. all their wins. And, th and those teams aren't very impressive to me. I think the Browns can win by four points at home against the Steelers. It's just my gut feeling. They are getting healthier. How much healthier, I guess we'll see when they play. But I, I feel comfortable uh, with the Browns here. I feel like they're substantially better than the Steelers, and I think they're going to show it. Substantially better. Okay. Uh, I just feel yeah. like this matchup is going to be close. I think my mindset coming into this game before seeing the number was I'm going to take the points. And the fact that I'm getting over a field goal here to take Pittsburgh, I like that, honestly. So um, I know that Cleveland is the better team up and down. They do have injuries, of course. But with Pittsburgh, they're coming off a bye, which I like. And I feel like some of the rookies they have now, like Pat Fryermuth is going to be more involved. Of course, Najee Harris has been off to an awesome start this year. But um, I like a lot of guys here on the Steelers offense to have a bounce back. And it's like, honestly, Pittsburgh's offensive line, while they can't run block for their lives, they haven't been that bad with pass blocking. I know a lot of it's because Roethlisberger gets rid of the ball as fast as anybody. But they're all, I feel like the Browns' defensive line – won't like blow up this game obviously the Browns can get to the passer but I feel like the way Ben Roethlisberger gets rid of the ball quickly um that'll kind of mitigate Miles Garrett and Clowney and all those guys on the Browns defensive line so you know Pittsburgh's defense of course they're very good and Baker Mayfield has his limitations so I, I think you know based on uh the Steelers getting the points here I know this game's in Cleveland but you know they're used to this matchup here so 
I'm going to take the Steelers. I think the Browns win still by three. I'm taking that as my, my prediction. So with right. that said, I will take Pittsburgh here barely. Um, Next, we have the Cincinnati Bengals at the New York Jets. The Jets are led by Mike White as their quarterback. Joe Flacco should back him up, but it seems like Mike White's going to be the starter this week. So um, Cincinnati is a minus 10 on the road here. Um, I'm taking Cincinnati, and you're taking the, uh, the Jets some, yeah. for some reason. Now, tell us why you're taking the, the New, Jets. The New, York, the New York Jets at Jet Life Stadium. You right. know, I, I just – I feel like this is a week where maybe Cincinnati takes it easy on things. And I've done this in the past, and I've been wrong in the past. I mean, just last week I thought that's what Arizona was going to do with Houston when they had a game against Tampa Bay uh, – Tampa Bay, Green Bay coming up uh, the following week. I thought they were going to play down to their opponent. That didn't happen. But I do think that happens here with the Bengals. They have some tricky opponents up ahead, some big games. They have to play the Browns, then the Raiders, then the Steelers, then the Chargers, then 49ers. This might be the last time – that they can really take an opponent lightly in a while. And I don't think you should take any NFL team uh, lightly, but they don't even have their starting quarterback, Zach Wilson, who hasn't been impressive uh, so far this year, but they're playing Mike White. The Jets are lifeless. They haven't been able to show anything so far this season. They got that one win against the Titans where everybody was like, hold on a second, maybe they can turn things around. They haven't. They've gotten even worse. Off the bye last week, somehow they still allowed 54 points, even though they had – what we, we thought was going to be one of the better defensive coaches in the league uh, in Robert Sala wasn't able to hold them even after having two weeks of preparation. But I think the Jets can backdoor this game. And I think the Bengals are going to be able to take it lightly. Bengals don't really know who Mike White is. Maybe he surprises them with a couple late touchdowns, gets them on the board. 10 points is a lot at home. I know it's the Jets, but I feel like the Bengals might take a rest this week and maybe win by five or six points. Mm. Yeah, I, I get the whole look ahead thing. We kind of did this last week though with the uh, with the Texans, yeah. and they they got their doors blown off by Arizona. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I just think the Jets are just so bad. Like, I I don't like. I kind of like them with Zach Wilson because Wilson has that upside where maybe he makes a few big throws and they put up fifteen to twenty points and cover a spread. But like, I like Mike White was okay when he first came in, but like it's Mike White. Like, what's he gonna do? Like, he's a guy who I feel like. This may have been his first NFL action, I feel like, last week. So, I don't know much about the guy. I saw him play it for a little bit. It wasn't overly impressive. And they just let up, like, 54 points to the uh, the Patriots. Like, the, the Jets' defense right now is just not in a good spot. And, you know, usually the Jets' defense – uh, in, in the past has been good against the run, but they were awful last week. They have now been pretty bad on the season. And when you have Joe mm-hmm. Mixon and, and P. Ryan, um, you can run on them. So plus Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, I'm not going to bet against those guys right now. I just don't think the Jets defense can stop them. I feel like as long as Cincinnati takes this one seriously, um, they'll probably cover this one by halftime. And I think they'll coast. I don't think the Jets have any sort of ability to backdoor because their offense is that bad so I mean I could be wrong but I mean I just don't see it happening with this Jets offense and remember Cincinnati's defense has been kind of good like they, they're getting pass rush pretty consistently this year and when you put that up against the Jets offensive line that's not very good I mean it's um you know it's a concern I have so I'm thinking Cincinnati I think they win by a lot so I'll take the uh the Bengals minus 10. Next, we're on to another good in-division matchup here. The Tennessee Titans are at the Indianapolis Colts. Tennessee's a minus one here on the road, but we are both going to go with the Indianapolis Colts. Did we skip a game? Oh, no, we didn't. Did we? I don't think so. We did not. No. Sorry, I was looking on to Philadelphia already. You see me? Look at me getting excited about my team. horses. Uh, Yes, I I, I did well with the Colts. I mean, look. They haven't surprised me. I'm not going to sit here and say that because I did expect them to be this kind of team at this point in the season. They can beat good teams and they can beat good teams on the road. And I know that they're home here. I know that Tennessee is a very hot team coming off of two huge wins uh, in the last two weeks, wins that nobody really expected them to get except us because we're geniuses on here, Mike. We didn't expect the Bills one, but I, I expected at least the Chiefs one. I don't know about you. Now we both took the Texans or the Titans right. there. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I, I, I do think Tennessee is a very good team, but Indianapolis is rolling too. And if it wasn't for a blown game by their defense against the Baltimore Ravens, they would have won their last three against really, really good teams. So I, I feel confident in Indianapolis. My man Carson Wentz is playing on fire. He finally looks like he's getting comfortable in that system. And I'm not going to shy away from him. I feel like uh, Tennessee – 
uh, is finally maybe going to get uh, stopped on offense by this defense. I, I, I really don't know. I don't know if there's a defense out there that can stop Derrick Henry and the Tennessee Titans. I'm going to hope so. But I still think Indianapolis can uh, put up points, and I think they outright win this game. So I'm going to take them with the plus one at home. Yeah, I mean, we saw the Chiefs, like, low-key kind of shut them down. Like, I think Henry had 29 carries for, like, 86 yards. So it's not the most efficient game. He had a passing touchdown, which I don't think anybody expected, but he did. Yeah. Um, that was a fun play. But, yeah, I mean, I've been kind of disrespecting the Colts for a while. Even last year, I wasn't really on the Colts too much. But I've kind of reached a point now where I, I saw them play on Sunday Night Football where I'm like, hey, this team's actually very good. Like, I think – the Colts have the ability to kind of hang with anybody if they play a good game. Now, I feel bad because they lost their safety, Julian Blackman, who's a good young player. Uh, he tore his Achilles, I believe, in practice, which sucks. But um, this this Colts defense is still playing at a pretty high level right now, and they can run the ball very well. Like, Jonathan Taylor has been on fire. And the way Carson Wentz is playing right now, I just don't know if uh, – this is the matchup where he'll be stopped because Tennessee's defense, while yes, they held KC to three points, that was more of a product of KC just turning the ball over and being bad. I don't buy into the Titans defense being anything good. So um, I think the uh, Colts are going to get T.Y. Hilton back in this game as well. So with all that said, I'm going to take the Colts here. I'm starting to buy in. So I will take them as a plus one here um, at home against the, uh, the Titans. Next, we're on to your team, the Philadelphia Eagles. They are at the Detroit Lions, and Philadelphia is a minus three and a half on the road, and we're both going to go with your Eagles here. Yeah, you know what? They're they're a high-scoring offense. That's just the way I'm going to put it, and they've played some tough defenses in the last few weeks, and I feel like this is their chance to uh, maybe exploit uh, the the Lions' defense. And I understand the Lions have been able to backdoor games and – honestly be able to put themselves in a winning position late in games if it wasn't for some crazy long field goals that they've gone up against but I think the Eagles are a better team and I feel like the Eagles uh last loss against the Raiders where they look bad offensively at the start of the game kind of sways this line more in favor of the Lions I've been watching this team all year I know that they're good I know their defense is capable of having good games I think this might be an opportunity for them to do so the Eagles put up points. I think they're going to do it in this game. I could see them winning by four or five points. And a little fun fact, they've scored 22 points in their last two games and in their last in their third game scored 21 points. Isn't that strange? Hmm. Interesting. So the Eagles I think are- they're going to score 30 plus in this game though. Really? The Eagles? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Even without Miles Sanders? Yeah. Kenneth Gainwell's a good number 2. I guess so. Yeah, I would hope so. I mean, I have him starting in a league, so I hope he's good this week. Um, uh, Kevin Durant's going to make that. All right, so on to – well, I'm still making my pick here. The Eagles. Um, I'm taking them as a minus three and a half. I mean, yeah, this Lions team, I mean, yes, they hang around, and they're a fun story because of their coach and whatnot. And I did pick them last week, so I gave them respect against going up against the Rams because the Rams, I feel like, in those big spread games don't do very well. Like, we saw last year how they lost to the Jets at home last year, the winless Jets at the time. And, you know, sometimes the Rams – like, actually, I love the way that um, that Dan Campbell was coaching that, that game with the onside kicks and the fake punts. It was actually very fun. Yeah. Like, it was actually working for them, too. And they, they still lost by nine, which are 11, whatever it was. Tells you how good the Rams are with all that going against them. But anyway – your Eagles have been, um, I guess, fine offensively. A lot of it was, once again, fourth quarter garbage time stuff because the Raiders were up like 24-3 in that game at one point. But this is a game where I expect Philadelphia to get up early. And I think Carson – not Carson. I think that, uh, that Jalen Hurts will have a big game in this one, I think. You know, as you said, I think they could put up near 30 points in this game. The Lions defense really is nothing impressive to me. Uh, I know that Miles Sanders is out this game most likely. But as you said, Kenneth Gainwell is fine. Boston Scott's been there. He's a veteran. As a Giants fan, I know Boston Scott's a good player. So, um, you know, I think he'll be fine there. So, yeah, I I like your Eagles here, and I think they win this game by, I would say, around seven plus. So I'm going to take them. I don't know why it's three and a half, but we will both take the Eagles there. On to the San Francisco 49ers at the Chicago Bears. San Francisco is a minus three and a half on the road. We differ here. I'm going to take the Chicago Bears, and you're going to take the 49ers. You know, the Chicago Bears disappointed me tremendously last week. I thought the defense was going to show up, be able to keep the game close. But honestly, I blame it more on their offense. Their offense just can't put up points. And you know what? I'm just going to go with my gut here. And I think San Fran's just a a better team. And they haven't played well either. So I I don't really like them as a team overall right now. But I don't like Chicago at all. They don't put up points. Justin Fields is probably at a spot uh, right now where he's 
lacking confidence because he's throwing picks. He's turning the ball over like crazy. He's not getting protection. He probably can't find anybody open all the time because he's scurrying away from the defensive line. So I'm going to take San Fran. Maybe they have a bounce back week. Maybe they get another win on the board. And I feel like they can cover a a three and a half point spread on the road. I think they win the coaching battle. I like their uh, offensive style better, a lot better than uh, Chicago. I don't know if Jimmy Garoppolo is going to play in this game. Maybe Trey Lance plays in this game. I don't know if they've decided yet. I think it's Garoppolo. But either way, I, I think San Fran could put up points, and I think San Fran's defense is pretty good. So if they're pretty good, then I think Chicago's going to struggle to score points once again. So I'm going to take San Fran uh, covering here on the road. Yeah, it's probably going to be like a lower-scoring game. I don't know what the over-under is. I actually could look right here in a second. Uh... Nope, doesn't tell you here. But it should be like a lower over-under in this game. I mean, this is a, a Bears offense. It's like last in the league in just about everything right now. But it's not like the Niners are impressing me either. Like, they are actually been – they've been kind of disappointing so far. Like, the Niners were a team that some people had going very far in the playoffs. Some people had them in the Super Bowl again. Um, they've been disappointing so far. I don't really uh, fully trust that team. And, you know, Chicago, I know they've been bad, but they can run the ball. I think they've shown it now. Like, they, they're run blocking on their offensive line. While they don't pass block very well, they're run blocking blocking has been pretty good so far and this now rookie Khalil Herbert's coming out of nowhere he rushed for over 100 yards against a very good Tampa run D and you know I feel like um, looking at the numbers right now the San Francisco 49ers are 20th in the NFL in rushing yards allowed per game on defense so I think you can run on these guys and if they can like kind of control the clock on offense and you know Chicago's defense hasn't been exactly what we thought it was going to be they have a pass rush which can get to Jimmy Garoppolo and can make him make bad decisions. I don't know if Trey Lance will be back for this game or not. I don't think it matters, but either way, I'm going to go with Chicago here. It's scary because they have a lot of trouble scoring points, but I think they can run the ball here. And I think this might be a game where hopefully Justin Fields can get something going. So it's, it's scary, but I'll take Chicago. Next, we're on to the LA Rams. They're at the Houston Texans, a big spread here. The LA Rams on the road are a minus 14 and a half. Um, we we're both going to take the Rams here, which I think is pretty wise of us. Yeah, you know, it was funny. You just uh, said before that you don't like taking the Rams in big spread games when you were talking about the Lions. And I, the think, Texans it's are... half a, I think it's a half a point difference. But, you know, <laughs> it is the Houston Texans, and we don't really know what's going on with them. One week they can score points, the next week they can't. And I know they played Arizona last week, so them not being able to score points was maybe justified because Arizona's defense has played really, really well. But L.A. has been dominant all year long, and it's really not time to shy away from them. I I did pick them last week against the Lions, but I should have understood that the Lions can actually put up points consistently, and they do compete in a lot of games that they shouldn't, whereas the Texans really don't do that. And – Tyrod Taylor is coming off the IR. I don't think he plays in this game, though. Davis Mills is still probably going to be in there. I'm going to go with my gut again. I'm not going to overthink it. It's something I'm trying to do lately, and it's been working out the last two weeks. So I'm going to pick L.A. covering minus 14 and a half, which is such an absurd spread. We need to get better teams in this league. Uh, It is, actually. We've seen some crazy spreads here recently. Even the 13 and a half in that Bills game is nuts as well. Um, But, yeah, I mean, Houston's just – awful right now I really can't even imagine backing that team they just literally couldn't do anything offensively Um, I know the Cardinals have a good defense but they just look so putrid and I just have a hard time thinking that the Rams if they even try in this game can't win this game by like 20 or more I just think like especially if Davis Mills plays now you know they they said Tyrod Taylor's eligible to come back this week we don't know if he is at this point but if he does play in this game I think that Taking Houston's probably like not the worst idea in the world, but as long as Davis Mills is the starter for Houston, I just can't imagine backing them. And the Rams right now are clicking. They have played a few bad teams in a row here, but so far they've been blowing them out. And I know last week's game was kind of close, but as I said, it's because that it was because the Lions had like two onside kick recoveries and a, a fake punt that was successful. So I don't think Houston's coach is doing that stuff. Maybe he will, but um, I feel pretty good right now about the Rams and their situation. Their defense is really good, and um, their offense with Stafford's rolling right now, so I'll take them to cover this this big number of 14 and a half. Um, Next, we're on to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Seattle Seahawks. Seattle is a minus three and a half at home here. Jacksonville's coming off the bye, but we're both going to take Seattle minus three and a half. Yeah, and it pains me because I like Jacksonville a lot, and I feel like they get better every single week. So for me to not pick them uh, coming off the bye is maybe a mistake. But I feel like Seattle is a lot better than the than Vegas is giving them credit for right now. 
And I feel like that's due to their lack of offense last week, but they weren't able to run the ball. And I feel like if they are going to be able to run the ball, then their offense is going to open up a lot better for Geno Smith. So I'm going to take them here because I don't think Jacksonville can uh, cover the run very, uh, very well. I think Alex Collins is going to be able to run up the gut. And we saw the week prior to their game against the Saints, like a lot of drives were just Alex Collins just getting like seven yards per rush and setting up first down after first down and getting in the end zone. I think that's a similar thing here. Minus three and a half in uh, Seattle, which is one of the toughest places to play in, in football for a rookie head coach in Urban Meyer and a rookie quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. I feel it's going to be a tough game. And I know Geno Smith is playing, but I feel comfortable with uh, minus three and a half at home here for Seattle. Yeah, as do I. I think, you know, Jacksonville, as I said, is coming off the bye, but do you really trust Urban Meyer to put together some like really good game plan to, you know, find a way to beat the Seattle team? He's a fantastic team? head coach. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Don't underrate um, him. I am underrating him. Uh, so, I, yeah, as you said, Seattle's done a good job running the ball. They, they brought back Rashad Penny last week. He didn't look that great, but just Alex Collins, no way he can run the ball. Um, you know, they had uh, DK Metcalf on a big play last week. Like, they, they'll they find a way, and Jacksonville's defense is not that good. So, um, even with them coming off the bye, I feel pretty good about Seattle's offense. It should be a lower-scoring game, but, you know, I just think that Seattle, with the crowd noise, as you mentioned, is going to be a big factor in this game. You know, we see teams using those, like, uh, silent counts and all that. Um, um, I just think right now Seattle is in kind of this desperation mode where, you know, Russell Wilson is probably going to come back at some point kind of soon, it sounds like, and they can't really afford to fall to it would be two and six if they lost. So they got to get to three and five here. Um, they're, they're facing that desperation mode here. So with them being at home here, maybe they win by three and we get screwed by half a point here, but I'm still taking Seattle. I think they win this game here. So I will go with them. Next we have, the New England Patriots at the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are a minus five and a half. I don't think the Chargers have beaten the Patriots in like, what is it, like 12 or 13 years? It's been a while for them. So historically, the Patriots own this matchup, but there was a different quarterback back then. Um, so with that said, I'm going to take the Chargers minus five and a half, and so are you. Yeah, you know, I've seen all these betting shows where like when they talk about the Patriots, they're like, oh, they're 14 and 0 in their last like 10 games against this or 14 games against the spread at home. I was like, we well, got to understand there was a different quarterback playing back then. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like there was a, there was a different guy that was uh, managing that team and they have a rookie quarterback this year. So who knows how things are going to go? Uh, LA coming off the bye. I mean, let's not forget they're a very good team. I know they got blown out by uh, Baltimore and maybe that wakes them up a little bit. I just don't want to give new England the respect of plus five and a half in LA going across the country against one of the better teams in the league and one of the better quarterbacks in the league right now especially coming off the bye, like I mentioned. I just feel like L.A. is going to be ready for this game. They had a heartbreaking loss, and they had to sit with that feeling in their stomach for two weeks. So I feel like they're ready to get back at it. New England is um, a team I do respect. I, I think they do, along with the Jaguars, as I mentioned before, get better every week. But I just think this is a tough spot for Mac Jones and Bill Belichick, and I think L.A. is just going to continue to roll right off the bye. Mm -hmm. I think the, the thing that concerns me about this game, like I, I think the Chargers are better everywhere on paper, honestly, but the thing that concerns me is that the Chargers have, I think the worst run defense in football right now. And I think the, the Patriots offense, what we saw with them last week and how they killed the Jets on the ground. Um, of course, now the Chargers offense can score, which might put them in more of a negative game script and maybe make Mac Jones pass more. But if they can run the ball the way, the way they did against the Jets, I mean, this will probably be a closer game. Is that Jack Harlow? Oh, Jack Harlow's at the Nets game. Look at that. I, I discovered that guy, by the way, Jack Harlow. Big fan. Um, yeah. Anyway, so I think with, with this game, I mean, stop shaking your head. Um, I think the Chargers right now, I mean, their, their special teams has been bad as usual, and the Patriots always have a good special team. So, like, we might see one of those stupid, like, I don't know, pump block plays where that changes the entire, like, score of this game. So as long as the Chargers avoid something like that happening, I like their chances because they are the much better team, in my opinion. I mean, the Patriots really haven't beaten anybody that great. They've hung around with good teams, but they've beaten who? The um, the Texans, they've beaten the Jets twice, I think, right? So, I mean, their wins are not the most impressive in the world. So now they're playing against a very good team here in the Chargers, coming off a bye with who I think is a good coach and Brandon Staley. So I like them here. I'll take the Chargers here minus five and a half. 
Next, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the New Orleans Saints. Should be a nice in-division matchup once again. Tampa Bay is a minus four and a half. Uh, I think right now it's a minus six, actually, but we did these scores yesterday, so I guess this benefits us as we're both going to take the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers here, minus four and a half. Yeah, I'm a little little mind-boggled about this spread. It it almost feels like there's something going on, but you saying that it actually went up to minus six makes me feel better. Because, you know, maybe Vegas is finally adjusting. It just doesn't make sense. I mean, what about New Orleans last week uh, against Seattle? I understand they won. But what about them really said, like, wow, they can keep this game close to a four-point game? It just – I don't know. It it really doesn't make sense to me. Um, And I know it's home. Uh, New Orleans is a, you know, a rough place to play for a lot of rookie quarterbacks. But, you know, the the guy's 44. He's been around the league a long time. I don't think it's going to affect them that much. Uh, I just really don't know what else to say. I would have thought this would have been closer to like a six, six and a half, seven. So I'm really happy taking Tampa Bay uh, minus four and a half here on the road. Yeah, I am too. I just think Tampa is such a dominant team. I mean, yeah, they were home last week and they played a Bears team. But um, see, my, my thing with this game was I wanted to take the Saints because I think the public perception was that we just saw the Saints play on, on Monday Night Football and they didn't look good. And we saw Tampa blow out the Bears at home. But like, I don't know. I just think Tampa's a better team. I don't trust the Saints offense and what they have going on because outside of like Alvin Kamara, what do the Saints do well offensively? Like not much. And I think that Tampa's a smart enough team and having Todd Bowles as their DC um, can help take Alvin Kamara out of the game. And I hope not for one of my fantasy teams out there that has Kamara, but I, I think they're smart enough to take Kamara out of this game. And at that point, how do the Saints beat you? Now the Saints defense is good, but who is stopping the um, the offense for the Patriots right now? Just nobody is. So I, I think they'll be fine. I think if the Patriots can put up like – not the Patriots. If the Buccaneers can put up um, like 25, 26 points in this game, I think they're good. Like I don't see the Saints scoring over 20, and I think they can get to that number. So um, as I said, the spread is kind of larger now. we got a good number here, but um, I'm going to go with the Bucks here. I think they win this game by, you know, hopefully around a touchdown or so. I, I think it's going to be a close game in the beginning, but I'm sure Tampa will pull away at some point towards the end here. Um, next, we're on to the Washington football team at the Denver Broncos. Denver is a minus three at home. Both teams that are very much struggling, and we go against each other, actually. I'm taking the Broncos, and you're going to take the Washington football team here. Yeah, it's just looking at this game, I, I feel like this might have been a spot where I usually, like, take the Broncos because they're not facing an overly tough opponent, and they have been struggling, so it might be a bounce-back week for them. But I just think Washington's better, and I think – their ability to score points on offense is what's going to be the difference in this game. They do put up points offensively, Washington. I know their defense has struggled. One of the worst in the league, actually. I think PFF graded them maybe 31 or 32, which is just not what we expected at all. I mean, we expected a top 10, top 8 defense uh, going into the year. So that's really disappointing for them. Um, But I just don't have a read on this Broncos uh, team as a whole. Their offense is very inconsistent. Their defense has been very good. Uh, Their secondary has been very good. Patrick Sertan has been absolute beast. uh, No question about it. But I just haven't seen consistency from this offense. And I feel like Washington, who puts up a lot of points, is going to score. And I don't think Denver is going to be able to keep up. I know they're at home, uh, high altitude. Maybe that affects Washington's ability to score here, but I don't know. I'm not going to pick a team I, I can't get a read on, so I'm just going to go with Washington. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't like either of these teams, honestly. I just side with Denver in this specific matchup. Denver, of course, having home field is big to me and then having the fans and the high altitude, as you said. And Washington, I mean, they you talked about their offense. Their offense is okay, but it's also filled with turnovers. And you look at this Broncos secondary, they can force turnovers. And the thing about Washington's defense right now is they're getting to the passer at a pretty high rate, but their secondary is so bad that it really kind of just doesn't matter. And I think with Jerry Judy coming back, especially who I love and, and getting him back as a playmaker, if Bridgewater can get the ball out of his hands and just accurately get the ball in the hands of Cortland Sutton and Fant and Judy and all those guys and, and the running backs do well, I think the Broncos can put up points here. And I do think both defenses are kind of in the same boat right now where they have talent, but they're underperforming. And I just like the Broncos or I like the Broncos more because they are the home team. And I feel like they'll hold Washington to, I don't know, 
under 17 or something like that. So I'm not asking for much here from Denver's offense. I think they can do it. It's about time they bounce back. I mean, Teddy Bridgewater is a guy kind of like in Tua situation where um, the Broncos are one of those teams that's kind of calling about um, Deshaun Watson right now, apparently. So I, I feel like Teddy Bridgewater is kind of on the hot seat. We almost saw Bridgewater bench for Drew Locke last week. Drew Locke kind of had his helmet on coming out of halftime, but they stuck with Bridgewater and he finally had a good drive to open the third quarter. So I think Bridgewater realizes his job's not very safe right now and secure. So I think he has a nice game here in Washington secondary. Once again, has been very bad. So I will go with the uh, Broncos there to win that game by more than three. Next we have on Sunday night football should be a good one. The Dallas Cowboys are at the Minnesota Vikings. Dallas is a minus two and a half on the road. And we both kind of have the same mindset here. We're both going to go with, with the Vikings here. Mike, Mike, can you tell me what this is? What is this? Pen. Can you tell me what this is? Paper. Write it down, folks. It's All upset right. season. Minnesota <laughs> will win this game against Dallas. I'm going to put it on the piece of paper right now, actually. Well, I'll do it after I finish talking. Uh, honestly, I, I just – I have a feeling sometimes, Mike. It just – I have a feeling. I don't really have the best explanation for it. I do think Minnesota is a very underrated team, and I think Kirk Cousins has played better than anybody's really expected. But I don't think – they're focused on him, you know, because who focuses on Kirk Cousins? Minnesota hasn't really been doing fantastic things. But Kirk Cousins has had a very good season. And I understand this Dallas offense has been phenomenal. And their team as a whole has been phenomenal. And they're a Super Bowl contender, as I said last week. But this is a big spot for Minnesota. I think they can win this game easily. And I think, you know what? I think Mike Zimmer out coaches Mike McCarthy in this one. McCarthy plays a little too conservative. It hurts him in the end. Write it down. Minnesota wins 31 to 28. Final okay. score. Hey, I can get on board. I think I'm picking Minnesota to win as well. So obviously I'm going to be with you on this game. Um, Dallas is coming off the bye. Both teams are coming off the bye, actually. So um, I just think Minnesota right now, like their offense, like the only differences between these teams really is that Dallas has a much better offensive line. But like, I also think the Cowboys secondary is beatable. I know they have the turnovers with Trayvon Diggs, but like, I feel like Adam Thielen and, and Justin Jefferson are going to be tough to stop in this matchup. Uh, the Cowboys run defense has been good this year, but you know, they're going to use Dalvin Cook in the receiving game. And Dalvin Cook now has another week to get fully healthy. So I like that for the Vikings offense as well. And as for Dallas, they've been very balanced on offense, but I, I do see a, a scenario here where the pass rush for the Vikings can get there because they have been pretty good this year with like Everson Griffin and Daniel Hunter and guys like that. Their pass rush has been getting there and maybe they make Dak Prescott a little uneasy in this game. So I agree. It's going to be a close one, but I'm actually going to take Minnesota to win this one as well. So with that being said, I will take the Vikings there with you. Now onto the final game where we have uh, – my team here, the Giants. The Giants are on the road at the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City is a minus 10 at home here. As a surprise, I'm taking the Giants, and you're going to go with the Chiefs here. Sorry. I'm trying to hang my piece of paper up on the wall. Yes, um, I, I, I am going to go with the Chiefs, and I feel like the Chiefs, they're a good team. I, I really believe in it, and maybe I, I, I'm just a, a guy that's caught up in what they've been doing in the last few years. But you know what? I've been fairly optimistic about the Giants thus far, and some people say too optimistic. And I have a feeling I have a read, a good read on the Giants this year, and I feel like Kansas City is going to whoop them. I, this is a spot where Kansas City wins by a lot, and, and I think they bounce back and they finally maybe get their uh, name back in the conversation of an AFC playoff spot. There are not many teams that I think could make the playoffs at the position that the Chiefs are in right now. But the Chiefs are a different breed. They have a good quarterback who's been playing poor. I understand it. But they have a good coach as well. Giants, they're not that great. And they're on the road on Monday Night Football in the cold in Arrowhead. Give me Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs minus 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, look, I mean, as, as a realistic Giants fan, I try to have it in the back of my mind that, hey, this game can very much go south. And the Chiefs can come out and beat us. Yeah. 35 to 17 or something like I, I do realize that's a possibility but from what I've seen with the Giants and Jason Garrett finally looks like a competent offensive coordinator which I'll probably be eating my words for at some point but he's actually been looking okay lately um the Chiefs have one of the worst defenses if not the worst of football their defensive line is getting no pressure and the Giants while they don't have the best offensive line they've been okay lately so um I think Daniel Jones will have some time to throw here and I think 
Kansas City, they're probably going to put up points, obviously. But the Giants' defense finally showed out last week. They finally played well. The secondary looked good. The pass rush got there. I think they sacked the uh, Panthers quarterback six times in that game. So um, it's not like KC has a good offensive line. They definitely have been struggling so far this year. So hopefully the Giants can get to Mahomes and keep pressuring him. But um, I do think Kansas City wins this game. But I, I think the Giants make it close, hopefully. I do want to see a competitive game here for, for 60 minutes, as Joe Judge would say. So I, I do yeah, want to see that happen. But um, I'm sure the Chiefs will win this one. But I'm still going to take the Giants here. It's going to be close, hopefully. So I'll, I'll take the G-men in this one. Um, so that is our final game as you hang up your thing on the wall there. Yeah, the it tag. says uh, Minnesota 31, Dallas 28, Cowgirls lose. Oh, I, I will, right. That will stay on the wall. And if I'm wrong, it will stay on the wall and it will shame me all next right. week. Good. I hope it shames you. Um, oh, man, these nuts stink. Um, you can tell right. this guy really wants to win because he hopes that I'm wrong. You can tell this guy really cares about his spread picks <laughs> because he went along with me. I'll you win every tell. other game. I'll just, I'll just lose that one. Well, game. this is why you've come down to my standard and I've rose up to yours. I guess so. Yeah, now I stink. Um, all right, you got any favorite bets? Because I have mine, too. I'll go first if you want, but you can think about it. Yeah, yours. you go first. I'll, I'll think about mine. All right, so my two favorite bets this week, I'm taking the Buffalo Bills as my first. They are minus 13 wow. and a half once again. Um, they are a home team against Miami, who they historically beat the crap out of, and There's a lot of uncertainties with Miami's quarterback situation. Buffalo's coming off the bye. Love them in that spot. And my other favorite bet, actually, surprisingly, is going to be the Denver Broncos. I'm taking Denver here as a minus three at home against Washington. I'm not really buying into Washington right now. I just don't think they have much going for them, even uh, offensively, which you tried to argue with me. I don't think their offense is that good. I think Denver's defense shows up in this spot. And as I said, Washington's secondary is very beatable. So I think Teddy Bridgewater finally has a decent game in this spot. And I think that the uh, I think the Broncos put up some points. So that's what I'm going with. You know, Mike, I don't agree with it, but I, I, I like the points you made. We'll see. We'll uh, see. I, I think it would be a little irresponsible for me. Actually, hold on. I'm going to go with Tampa Bay minus four and a half while we still have that there because mm-hmm. it is minus six, like you said, in real life. But I'm going to take it minus four and a half, which is what it was yesterday. I think it would be a little irresponsible of me if I didn't go with my gut that's on the wall here. So I uh, will take Minnesota plus two and a half as my other favorite bet. Gotcha. Boom. So Lock it Tampa in. Bay. Lock it in. <laughs> Tampa Bay. Excuse me, Tampa Bay, yep. and we're going to take Tampa Bay and the Vikings. Okay. Let's just put it this way, everybody. I had the same feeling I have with Minnesota as I did last week with Tennessee, and they outright won the game, and they were a favorite mm. bet of mine. Ride the it's wave. Just one of those feelings, huh? Just one of those games. We do get those as sports fans sometimes. Like, sometimes I'll have a good yeah. feeling about a game, and it, it comes, you know, it, it happens. Like, it's weird. I don't know how these things happen, but they do, and I think we all have that feel for a game sometimes. So, I'll you, want trust you. Little, you want to hear a little story time? It's, no. it's short. Fine. Um, uh, on Thanksgiving, when the uh, Eagles played the Lions way back when, the night before, I had a dream that the Lions won. And I woke up like, ain't no way the Lions are winning this game. And they crushed us. When I tell you they, cr- <laughs> they crushed us. And I will always remember that. Dreams come true, ladies and gentlemen. What year was that? Do you know? I don't know. I can look it up for you right like now. a long time ago. Yeah, Eagles, Lions, Thanksgiving. Might have been the Sam Bradford days or something. Um, yes, so the Lions lost 40 – I mean, the Lions won 45-14 to 14, oh. uh, in 2015. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matt Stafford had three touchdown passes uh, – five touchdown passes, three of them to Calvin Johnson. Mm. Um, Mark Sanchez was 19 for 27 for 200 yards and two touchdowns. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah, Calvin Johnson was a different breed in general, but especially on Thanksgiving, he was different level there. Um, all right, so I guess that'll do it, right? You got nothing else to say there, buddy? I have nothing else to say. Nothing else to say. All right, so we'll close it out. Hopefully everyone enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys for week nine, and hopefully after this week, I will be beating Andrew once again. We'll talk to you next time.